Hey guys, what is up? Super K Man Rocks here, and I am here for my LPL round two overview and analysis of both of the series in the second round here. I'm very excited to go over these two, obviously. We already did round one coverage. If you want to check that out, that's going to be up in the iCard right now, but. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time. We've got a lot of games to get into, two full series. And of course, if you know on this channel, we go game by game. Two really fun ones between teams that honestly probably shouldn't be facing off in round number two. There were a couple teams that ended up making it through, obviously, in round number one that are just way too good for this part of the bracket. So some interesting matchups on the way. But of course, let me know down in the comment section below what you guys were looking forward to the most in these series. If you want to break down, like I said, you've got that video to check out. I'll give a little bit of a lowdown as to what I was expecting, you know, at the beginning of each of these segments. I'll kind of talk about, you know, all the teams and how I think they fare up against each other. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to be starting with the upper bracket series because they went first and there's really, that's really the only direction that we can go in that way. So we're going to be starting it off with the number five seeded Billy Billy Gaming taking on the number nine seeded Royal Never Give Up. And RNG, of course, uh, beating Thunder Talk to get here in round number one. That was expected. They should have been the better team. They really should have never been in that predicament in the first place. But this team has really underperformed all year long. And BLG was kind of in that same boat for a little bit. They ended up getting their act together a lot quicker than RNG did. And so BLG ends up getting that 5 seed, which I think is relatively good for them. They struggled early on and even later on to an extent to play through that jungle mid duo. Luckily, I don't think that's really something that RNG uh, necessarily thrives on either I would say uh, both of these teams I would definitely consider bot lane oriented teams with solid top sides that's really how they like to play the game not that Yagao hasn't been good especially over the back half of the split I think he's been very underrated but Jun and Wei I think have both been question marks for their team and you know Yagao and Angel aren't take over carry kinds of players it's going to be a lot up to the bot laners which is why they were my matchup of the series here Elk and Gala whoever ends up winning that is probably going to be more impactful in this series of course top lane's also intriguing Bin versus Breathe is always going to be a fun matchup because they were traded for each other uh, in the middle of the year last year and so a little bit of a rivalry going on between those two players but overall very fun matchup I think I predicted BLG in four in this one you can check in that video it might have been BLG in three it was one of those two but um, I, I think BLG should be able to handle this series but let's see if I was right or if RNG is going to put up a little bit more of a fight let's go ahead and jump into the game by game analysis of course starting off with game number one and game number one was won by RNG. They are actually able to take this first game and take control of the series. This is a big win, obviously. Uh, the momentum setter game number one kind of is, and so... It can be a huge asset in, uh, to win that game number one, to get that momentum on your side, to get some confidence as well. Obviously, mental is a huge part of League of Legends, and just being able to play at your best is a big part. RNG's really struggled with that over the course of the year, but I think kind of the win streak they're on, being able to take down TT in a reverse sweep, I think helps a lot. Being able to take game number one against BLG should give them the confidence to play with a lot of the rest of this series, but it was a little bit of a back and forth game. First blood for Gala, uh, which was really, really important. We'll get to that. Gala was incredibly important in this game, but way controlled the early game. He was really the one that was setting up a lot of the plays for RNG that they were able to capitalize on. Great gank, great gank bot lane. They were able to get Dragon off of it, and then they eventually dove Elk as well. Not really much you can do uh, from getting bullied here. The bot lane was playing super aggressive. Gala and Mang are just so good. And obviously the focal points for RNG that it's going to be a little bit difficult to play anywhere else on the map. And Wei knew that. Unfortunately, Jun didn't quite get the memo. They eventually do go topside, or at least the junglers go topside for a Herald fight. And there, actually, BLG is able to pull back some gold, uh, which is really, really important, keeping this game relatively close. That was really the only thing to stop RNG from snowballing. They were able to win, I believe, uh, going like two for zero or three for zero, something like that, in that fight. Um, and then uh, Angel is is getting caught out a lot in the mid game here. I, uh, you know, uh, we've talked about Angel in the past and some of his positioning errors, but his mechanics have certainly not been on display in 2023. He uh, is really bad in this game, if I'm being entirely honest. He almost costs RNG a lot over the course of the game. Bin gets really strong off of some nice picks mostly onto Angel but you know eventually some of these team fights he's able to get ahead in the uh the Rift Herald fight that I talked about earlier but also you know just some general catches around the map he ends up being like 4-0 uh I think by like 15 minutes into the game that's a really strong Gwen it's especially gonna be a problem for someone like Vi who just wants to go in and kind of blow up a backliner you're really not gonna be able to do that with a super strong Gwen and so eventually this game just becomes Bin versus Gala uh the Zeri is ridiculously strong from a lot of the early plays and then Bin is incredibly strong from a lot of the mid game plays and so it's about who's gonna be 
be able to take over team fights more. Big surprise, it's the AD carry that is uh, ending up doing a lot of the damage towards the back half of the game. I think a lot of people are going to give player of the game to Gala, but I'm going to give it to Wei because I don't think that Gala would have actually gotten to the point where he could carry this game nearly as easily if Wei didn't play as good in the early section. Not exactly a perfect end game coming out from him, but I still think that generally speaking, he was the most important player to RNG in this game. But if you want to put it on Gala, that makes a lot of sense. If you want to give it to Meng as well, he was really good. He did a great job zoning on out of a lot of these fights. On Rakan, it can be really easy to kind of get in onto a Zeri or an Ari, or I mean, sorry, an Annie, especially if they're positioning poorly. But uh, Nautilus was doing a great job of peeling and, and making sure that he was uh, kind of spotting, kind of watching the Rakan in all of these fights to try to make sure that he could not really get as much done as he would want to. He basically had the ultimate at the beginning of every fight. And then as soon as that wore out, he was just incredibly useless. He was dying incredibly quickly because of how frail he was and how much RNG was actively focusing him. So big credit to Wei, Gala, and Ming. They were the three that I think really stood out for me. Like I said, Angel with kind of a bad game and it's not particularly surprising. He hasn't been all that good for RNG this year, but they were able to survive it and they were able to pick up the win. As for BLG on the other side... You were close. Again, Bin got super far ahead, and he had a really good game just in general. Bin always does really well into RNG. It feels like he definitely took the trade personally. He played really well in the regular season as well, and last year he did really well into RNG, but unfortunately the macro diff was just a little bit too much. Bot lane kind of got gapped here. Elk is going to get my dud of the game. I think you could realistically give this to On as well on support. Like I said, not really a lot of good engages coming out from the Rakan, but not a lot of them were his fault in my opinion. I think some would consider it inting, but I would consider it more just bad, you know, bad matchup. I think RNG did a really good job focusing the Rakan, knowing that there was really nobody else in the enemy team they had to worry about. And then Elk was just a little bit too aggressive this game. I think if he was a little bit more passive with his positioning, then perhaps it's a little bit of an easier game for them to play out. But he wanted to play aggressive early because he's Zaya and Tazari, and you want to be able to generate that lead, but way with a nice gank. And then eventually in the mid game, he's just a little bit, he's getting out macroed, right? RNG does these one three ones really successfully, even when the enemy team has some strong solo laners, they're able to kind of pull the teams in other directions. They play off of vision really well, and Elk was just getting caught in some unfortunate situations. I don't think he's going to be like this the whole series, but it wasn't a particularly good game one from him. Jun didn't really do anything on the Wukong, and Yikao on the LeBlanc was essentially non-existent this game. It really was just Bin that was trying to hold down the fort for BLG. But overall, I would say decent game from RNG. I think there are definitely some things they can improve on. The mid game just wasn't very good, but they won the early game and they won the late game, so they were able to take it. BLG definitely needs to bounce back. I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. You don't want to go down 2-0 in a series. You certainly don't want to go down 2-0 to RNG and to a player like Gala. You, you do not want to be trapped in a position where you have to beat him three games in a row. It's possible, but it's just not likely. And so this is a big game for both of these teams. But who's going to be able to take it? Is RNG going to be able to take that commanding lead? Or is BLG going to take some of the momentum back? Well, the winner of game number two was... Billy Billy Gaming, they are able to take game number two and tie up this series at one apiece. Super important, like I said, you do not want to fall down 2-0, and they didn't here. They basically turned this into a regular season best of three now, but this game was a lot of fun to watch. It's a 28-minute win, but you wouldn't know it if you just watched the first, I don't know, minute of the game. Um, a level one pick for RNG, which is usually huge in the LPL. I think the statistics on that are actually absurd. Like, it's like 96% win rate if you get a level one like, weird play, and so, uh, unfortunate for RNG that they weren't able to hold that on, but a, a good level one pick on to June, uh, but he rebounds, I would say, really well, a uh, really good macro in the early game, he just out jungles way, pathing-wise, he's able to get a really strong start, even after the, the pickoff at level one, you would assume that RNG would be able to control the jungle matchup in particular from that point onwards, but they just don't, they don't play nearly aggressive enough to be able to stop June from being able to farm a little bit, and then be able to make some nice plays into the bot lane, Really good gank coming out from him, um, I believe it, like, uh, six or seven minutes into the game, somewhere around there, where they end up getting a double kill down in the bot lane, and basically, from that point onwards, it's a lot easier for BLG. Kind of like we talked about in the previous game for Gala, when Elk got ahead on the Zeri, it was just a lot more difficult to actually play into them, but, you know, just generally speaking, after that early blood, once they knew that they had... Uh, kind of the momentum and a lot of the favor in the game. They knew they could be a lot more proactive on the map. They knew they could move around. They weren't as scared of the Aphelios Thresh in the bot lane. They weren't as scared of Zeri not being able to fight back. And so the Rakan was everywhere, man. And this is what On does well. I know people criticize On a lot. And I can definitely understand why. He certainly has some questionable plays. But he's going to be very Feaster Fam. And I think he's a very similar player to Hillisang, like I've said in previous years. And, you know, when Hillisang's on, he's awesome. And when On's on, he's awesome, right? And that's what we had in this game. He was leaving lane. Doing a great job initiating on the Aphelios when he had the chance, but, you know, roaming into the mid lane and trying to create plays and being able to pick up kills onto Angel in the mid lane and then, you know, moving down into the Dragon Pit, you know, a little bit early to make sure that Ming has no pressure to be able to get wards there before the rest of the team is able to show up and 
just a lot of really good plays in general. Ming does try his best to, you know, create some action, uh, especially during a lot of these dragon plays, some really good Thresh hooks, but unfortunately, June is just as good as Thresh, it would seem, because the Viego on those resets when he turns into Thresh was actually kind of nasty with some of those hooks. Really, really fun stuff to watch. It's always cool to see a Viego player be able to pull out some, like, interesting things on other champions. It's always interesting to see what players are able to play. Um, Elk is just so strong on the Zeri by this point. We're, we're about 15 minutes into the game. He's just way too strong on the Zeri. Now, if the team peels for him it's basically gg and that's really what on's doing now no more going in all the way because you've got a kennet you've got a viego you've got plenty of tools to be able to engage on on knows that his job at this point is to keep people off of elk and elk is able to take over a lot of these team fights rng ends up trading baron for bin's life which is almost never worth it uh and then they're basically forced into contesting you know the soul point on to Drake, but they get aced for it, the game ends from there, you know, they get Baron, the game is over, etc, etc. Pretty easy closeout, I would say, for BLG in this one. Like I said, player of the game is going to go to On in the support position. I think you could talk about some of the, you know, questionable plays that he's made in previous series, but like I said, when he makes the good plays, he shows why he's one of my favorite supports in the entire world, why he's one of the players in the LPL that I was super early on the hype train for last year. And it's because he's just ridiculously aggressive. He's going to go out and try to make plays. When he's able to generate a lead, he's just better than pretty much every other support that he's going to be going against. Even a player like Ming. And, and credit to Ming, I thought he played relatively well here. There's only so much, obviously, that a Thresh can do from playing from behind. But he was really good on the hooks. And, you know, On did a really good job, I think, neutralizing a lot of the CC and a lot of the threat that RNG ended up giving. I think the other player that you have to shout out in this game is Jun in the jungle. Really good performance from him, and I really needed to see this. I know Viego is a big pick in the LPL a very common pick for a lot of the players here and you know obviously just go to comfort it's playoffs you've got more games to spare it's pretty much always worth it to at least try to see if you can play what you are good at before you try and say like it's just not good enough to play right now you know it's always worth at least giving it a shot and June was clearly proficient at this Viego pick here. Um, I've been very critical of him. I think he's been probably the weak link of BLG over the course of the year. He hasn't exactly adapted to being on a top team nearly as well as I think some other players around the league have. But this was a really good performance. And if you're getting a solid performance, even after a bad level one from your jungler, that is just, that's a huge boon that I think BLG just hasn't really had all split long. That could be a big X factor for them moving forward. But Bin was really good on the Kennen. Those flanks towards the back half of the game were disgusting. Elk was doing a ridiculous amount of damage on a champion he could actually hurt on. Yagao had some nice cages. Just generally speaking, BLG was really solid in this game, and they definitely deserved to win. As for RNG on the other side, never fun to throw a level one lead, but you know, in this one, you definitely could have been more proactive. Way in particular, I thought was way too passive in the early game. He needed to be a little bit more aggressive. He needed to push June out even more. This Lee Sin already has a lot of pressure over the Viego. After that level one kill, it should have been his game over. Like he should not have been able to play at all for him to be able to get off some interesting ganks in the bot lane and be able to secure objectives early. It's just, it, it shouldn't be happening, right? You should be tracking him at all points in time. That should be your number one priority as the Lee Sin in that game. But he was far from the only problem. Bot lane was a little bit of an issue, especially after they got killed early. This Aphelios was completely useless. Gala's gonna get my dud of the game for it. Just no damage coming out from him. It's really difficult to have damage from the entire enemy team when you're getting flanked by a Kennen and a Viego and even there's a Rakan on the other side and you gotta watch out for Vigar Cage. Like, there are so many things you have to deal with as the Aphelios. I'm not saying it's entirely Gala's fault, but there definitely were things that I think you could have done better in this game, and there was just no damage coming out from the Aphelios, and so he's gonna get my dead of the game, but Angel had another pretty bad one, was really susceptible to ganks in the mid-game on, roaming up, June moving down, like, th there was just a lot of opportunities for Angel to get, you know, kind of ganked on, because he's just a little bit too aggressive on the Andy's positioning. I know she's relatively short range, but you still gotta be able to watch out for that. Overall, just not a lot of positives going out on the side of RNG. This was not nearly as good as game number one, and that does worry me. Uh, mid lane really hasn't been a huge factor in this series so far, but Angel has not been good. Bot lane has been a huge factor, I would say, so far, but I think it really has just been whichever team has had Zeri, so it's going to be interesting to see if that trend continues as we move into some of the later games in the series. The series basically starts anew here, and it becomes a best of three, so it's going to be very important to be able to pick up the momentum in this one, but who's going to be able to take it? Is it going to be BLG? Is it going to be RNG? Well, the winner of game number three was... Billy Billy Gaming. They are able to take game number three and move up into the series two to one. Big win from them here, and honestly, it started in draft. It's really difficult to not talk about draft in this instance because BLG was on red side, and they absolutely used that counter pick to their biggest advantage. I mean, look at the comp on RNG. You look at Malphite, you look at Galio, hell, even Rakan, like, to an extent, right? And you see that R5 Silas locked in, you go... We're screwed. Like, we, we, how do we play the game? How do we play the game? Um, we already know that Silas completely counters Malphite. We already know that Silas completely counters Galio. 
to have him against both, like, it's it's just doomed. Like, you were just completely doomed. And guess what? The Silas was a little bit of a problem this game. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but, you know, I said a little bit of a cheeky comment earlier in game two that mid lane hasn't really mattered so far. Knowing we were going to get into this game number three where Yagao just absolutely destroyed RNG. Basically by himself. Like, it wasn't entirely by himself, but he certainly did a, burn, a bunch of the heavy lifting in this game for sure. He's player of the game. What a big shock, but... Uh, early 2v2 in the bot lane, both AD carries get a lot of gold. It actually wasn't in the bot lane, it was in the mid lane, but uh, both AD carries, I believe, getting double kills. Elk getting a lot of gold, Gala getting a lot of gold. Neither would really do a lot with it. Gala, in particular, wouldn't really do anything. Elk's positioning wasn't particularly good in this game, but Yagao plays really well in the mid game, so it's fine. They're able to generate a small advantage, some really good picks from him. He's able to get one into the top lane onto Breathe, using Malphite Ultimate, what a surprise. And I think he's able to get top tower off of that, and so... You know, small lead, I would say, for the Silas, but it doesn't end there. Yagao keeps finding picks. He gets uh, Breathe one more time. He finds Wei. He's solo killing Gala. Like, there's just... He's killing everybody, right? He's solo killing everybody. It's not just in team fights. He's just obliterating people. Malphite Old is just simply too good. Uh, BLG ends up becoming too strong very early on into this game, much quicker than I would have expected them to. They end up taking a fight around Baron, quote unquote. It's basically them forcing Baron and hoping that RNG face checks and they end up face checking and even the Galio ultimate can't really save anybody. They end up basically death balling this entire comp and just absolutely obliterating RNG and just kind of walking their way to a win. This was absolutely dominating from BLG. This was the best single performance of the entire series so far, and it's not even close by Yagao. Playoffs Yagao is here, obviously. He was awesome in the playoffs for JDG last year, in both spring and summer, but especially in summer when that team won uh, the title last year. He was a huge reason why they were able to win it. He was phenomenal in their playoff run, and, you know, Playoff Yagao is starting to become a real thing. Like, he has been sensational for pretty much every team that he's played for in the playoffs, and so credit to him. He had another really good game on Silas he already talked about it a bunch, but June deserves a lot of credit as well. Some really proactive plays, some uh, really aggressive plays. Luckily, he's got some nice backliners that are helping him get out of some of these fights with the Lee Sin Dash, but, you know, definitely a little bit more than he could chew at times, especially in that final Baron fight. I thought Odd was really good on the Annie. Some of those stuns were really perfectly timed, but overall, this was a Silas game. This game was entirely about one member of BLG, and that was Yagao, and he really did take over. As for RNG on the other side... I mean, I don't really know what to take away from this game. This was just complete and utter draft if. Like, there is no way you can win this if Yagao plays well, because Malphite Ultimate just wrecks your entire team with full AP scaling. Like, how exactly do you play into that? Uh, I really don't know, but it, it did a lot of damage. Um, Angel really couldn't do a lot in this game. I think you could realistically give Dud of the game to him, but I gave it to Breathe just, again, because Mal blind picking Malphite when mid lane's still up on the board is very risky against someone who is very good at Silas, and Yigao has always been very good at Silas. It was a big reason why JDG was so good last year. Silas was super in meta, and Yigao was very good at that pick. They were able to pull it out a lot in playoffs, and, you know, kind of picking the Malphite here, just being like, oh, well, I'm playing into Ophelio, Sleece, and Jax. Of course, I will pick the Malphite. It's just, it's not going to work out, and it did not work out in this game. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of an unfortunate scenario, but I do think the Malphite being in the game was a big reason why they ended up losing. I think you could put it on Angel for just getting blasted in the early laning phase, but that's going to happen. He's playing Galio into Silas. Like, what exactly is he supposed to do? You could give it to Gala, because honestly, he got gold in the early game. He played that early fight really well and did absolutely nothing with it. I mean, his positioning was kind of poor towards the back half of the game, uh, but just overall, like, again, it felt like predetermined who was going to be able to win this. I'm not usually the draft diff guy, but that's absolutely what it felt like in this game. I wish I had more, like, a, more of a detailed breakdown or analysis, but it was just an utter stomp uh, with, you know, Yigao picking up three or four solo kills in the game. Uh, it definitely is momentum on the side of BLG. They definitely, I think, gathered a lot of it in this game here. But are they going to be able to retain it? Well, the series is now on the line for RNG. They cannot lose another game. If they do, they are officially eliminated from the playoffs here in 7th, 8th place. Which, of course, is not good for an organization like RNG. This is a must-win game for them. But BLG probably wants to close it out as well. You don't want to go to a do-or-die game 5 with a team like RNG. And so... You know, I would say it's definitely more do or die for RNG, obviously, but a, a game that both teams want to win here in game number four. But who is going to end up taking it? Well, the winner of game number four was... BLG! Billy Billy Gaming takes game number four, and they close out the series in four games here with a 3-1 series win over RNG. And it's got to feel pretty darn good, especially for a player like Bim. Obviously, the former organization that, you know, they're going up against, it's got to feel pretty good to be able to pick up the win. But even players like Yagao, 
you know, even a player like Elk or On, you know, probably June, you know, players who have been falling to RNG for years, players who have had trouble getting over this org, to be able to face them in round two and be the ones to knock them out of the tournament, it, it's always got to feel like a pretty good thing, I would say overall for a lot of these teams and a lot of these players to beat such a prestigious organization, but this was another stomp, it's another game I'm going to have a lot of trouble giving you like a comprehensive breakdown on because it was just rather one-sided and there really weren't a lot of like, oh my god, you know, I got to talk about this individual play. Um, I can kind of give you the game-by-game -game events early on. Two kills for June, pretty early. I think First Blood went to way on Yigal, but he overextended so much that, you know, Lee Sin just walking in and hitting Q on both the Viego and the Annie just made it completely doomed for, uh, you know, RNG to be able to salvage anything out of it. It's an immediate double kill for Lee Sin, and unlike what uh, Wei did in game number two, where he just kind of let Jun get back into the game. Jun did not let Wei get back into the game. He played super aggressive on the Lee. He took his advantage and moved it around the map, and they basically had perfect macro, I would say, for a lot of this early to mid game, and it really made it difficult for RNG to play and do really anything. Uh, they have to resort to going for a death push into the bot lane that BLG actually scouts out. They do get some gold off of it, but it's just not really enough. The macro advantage is a really big deal. BLG is just taking towers everywhere on the map, basically for free. Some kills are going in favor of RNG, but the gold lead is very much still in favor of BLG, and it just kind of sets them up into a position where RNG has to fully engage, and, you know, Wei and Breathe have to basically go all in. They get completely countered by the cannon ult, and they all just die, and the game is over. Like, cannon ult into a uh, Vigar cage is very difficult to deal with. Like, you pile that onto a Lee Sin kick or a Leona ultimate. Like, there's so much CC and there's so much ability to deal damage in an AoE cone. You know, you add on, like, Aphelios, Aphelios blue gun to that as well. Well, like, the ridiculous amount of damage that you can do if the circumstances are right, uh, it can just be a pretty big problem for RNG to get over, and they really weren't able to get over it. I know they were trying to trade back here and there with some, you know, pick plays, I would say, in their pick comp, but it just was never going to be enough to actually win a 5v5 when they needed to. They ended up giving over Baron, and at that point, the game was significantly over. They go for this final push in the top lane, and they're just not able to do anything, but overall, just great series from BLG. I think outside of game number one, everything looked really good. They were set back pretty early in game two, but they did a good job overcoming it, and then games three and four were kind of cakewalks for them, if I'm being entirely honest. They were definitely the better team in both of those games. Player of the game in game four is going to go to Shum on the Lee Sin. I don't know how it can't. He was able to pick up those early kills, and then he used that pressure to completely dismantle anything that RNG attempted to do. Way had a miserable game in game number four, but he certainly was not the biggest problem on the team. We'll get to the solo laners, but the solo laners were just awful in this series for RNG. They're probably the biggest reason why this team is going home so early, but player of the series for me, not player of the game, but player of the series is actually going to go to Yigal in the mid lane. Obviously, that Silas game was big, but he was really good in on Vigar as well. A huge split pusher on that champion. It's not really what you associate with Vigar as a big tower taker, but Yigal did a really good job creating pressure in other places on the map rather than just exactly where his team was. He was often the one in the 1-4 comps that they were going for, or at least in the 1-4 executions that they were going for, and he did a great job playing right on the edge of danger. He was a big asset to this team, and it's really good to see him playing so well. There was a really big gap between the quality of mid laners in this series and Yigal was definitely on the positive side of that. I think Elkanon had some really good games, and especially in their wins. That game two looked really good on the Zeri. I don't think game three and four were perfect for the Aphelios, but, you know, it was okay enough. And I thought On was very aggressive, which is pretty much always going to be a good thing. And then those Kennen ultimates coming out from Bin. I didn't think Kennen was that strong of a champion. You know, he's not exactly the best in solo queue right now, and I thought that would translate relatively well to pro, but Kennen has been absolutely smurfing and basically every game that I've watched him in in pro this split in any region like he's just been really good and so I'm, I'm a cannon believer now I've completely flip-flopped this champion super strong and he gives you so much advantage and Ben played him really well in games three and four a really good showing from him but overall it was just everybody on BLG stepping up and looking really really solid really no complaints coming out for me at all when it comes to this team as for RNG on the other side your split ends today which is awful I mean this is a team that has won the last two MSIs in a row not just LPLs but MSIs in a row in spring, and so uh, to be knocked out in 7th, 8th place after the expectations that you had going into this split, it's a massive disappointment, and I think a lot of the fingers are going to get pointed at the solo laners, and quite frankly, it is kind of deserved. Like, Gala and Ming are really, really good at the game, and they had decent games, they just weren't able to translate really any of the gold that they had because it wasn't enough gold, and I think Wei was bad in this series, but he's had good moments, right? Like, I'm not willing to completely give up on him just yet. 
But Breathe and Angel have just not been particularly great. Breathe has been very hit or miss over the course of the split. I do think he's had more hits than people are willing to give him credit for. I've seen people say that he's not even a top, like, seven top laner in the LPL, and I think that's absolutely ridiculous with how good top lane, or how not good top lane has been in the LPL over the course of this split, but... I don't really think there's a lot of defending I can do for Angel in the mid lane. He just got gapped every single game of the series. Even against Thunder Talk, like, Yukal was definitely the better mid laner. Angel just does not feel like he can be a mid laner on a team that is actually trying to win in the playoffs. And that's a little bit disappointing. I, I don't really know what your options are. Uh, I know a lot of people have been suggesting, like, crying. And that would certainly be an interesting reunion to happen between player and team. But... I, I don't know if Angel can be your mid laner if this team wants to compete for top four going into summer. Like, I just don't think it can be possible. And, and this team absolutely should be competing for top four in summer. There really is no, like, reason that they shouldn't be. Gala and Ming can, they have to be trying to go to Worlds. Way has to be trying to go to Worlds. Breathe is a good enough player to go to Worlds. Like, this team absolutely needs to be in that conversation. They're not going to be right now, but you have to be able to make those adjustments and figure out what is going wrong so that you can change it moving into the next split. Right now, if you kept these five, I don't have a ton of confidence because, again, the solo laners just lose so consistently, but there is a lot of upside on this team, and you never really know the exact direction that a team is going to be going. Maybe it's just a cohesion thing, but... Overall, RNG season is over, and they've got a lot to work for. BLG is going to be moving on. We're going to preview, obviously, all of the series in round number three at the end of the video, but they looked really, really good in this series, and honestly, this gives me a lot of hope that they're going to be able to translate a lot of the success into the future playoff series. And then we get to move on now to our second series of round number two. And this one, in my opinion, a little bit more interesting than the top series. I thought the first series that we talked about was going to be a little bit more one-sided. And it kind of went how I thought. BLG was definitely the better team to RNG in that one. But this one, I think, could be very competitive. And I was really excited to see which version of both of these teams we were going to get. So we had the six-seeded, oh my god, taking on the seven-seeded top esports. Really excited to see this, obviously. Top Esports really falling towards the back half of the split. This looked like a top two, top three team for most of 2023, but then they just went on this horrendous losing streak to put themselves into seventh place in the LPL. They had to play through round one. They ended up getting the job done against a WE team that they absolutely should have beaten, but... Now the real test starts because they have to go up against OMG. Now, OMG's been a little bit feast or famine. They've looked really good in some series and some games, but they've also been able to be beaten by some teams that are just not playoff caliber. Rare Adam comes to mind. I think the loss to LGD as well. So not exactly the most consistent team in the entire world, but, you know, OMG have been consistently able to beat some of the more talented teams in the league, which Top Esports absolutely is. This is an interesting matchup. I think my prediction was Top Esports in four, so that was kind of what I expected. I think Top Esports is a little bit underrated by the community, or at least that's what I think going into the series, and I really didn't trust OMG to be able to keep a lot of the form that they were showing in the regular season moving into the playoffs, but anybody who follows the channel knows I'm a big fan of OMG. I'm a big fan of a lot of these players, and so I would love to be wrong, but am I going to be wrong or am I going to be right? Who's going to be walking out? of this series with the win and who is going to be eliminated from the spring split well let's find out starting off with game number one and game number one was a top esports win they are able to open up the series with the big win which they really really need obviously momentum's great here but Top Esports always does so much better when they are just mentally confident. They, you know, momentum can be everything, but confidence is actually everything for a team like Top Esports. Talent is never really going to be an issue for this team, but them knowing exactly how they want to play the game and knowing that they can trust themselves in that game is going to be incredibly important, and they were able to establish that very early on into this one. This is a very controlled, very macro-oriented performance coming out from them, which is not really what I expected them to do, but a very slow, methodical, controlling game very LCK-like in that kind of delivery, and I think they ended, it ended up working out in their favor, I would say, generally speaking. A good early game comp coming out from them. I hate OMG's draft. I think it's simply too passive for the players at your disposal. I like the Wukong, but I don't like the Scion or the Zeri. I think Zeri can definitely be useful for a team like OMG to have that late game insurance, but Scion is just simply too passive in the top lane for a player like Shanji that wants to be able to generate his own leads in a lot of these games, and it just wasn't going to be the case in this one. Really bad early positioning coming out from Aki on this Wukong that I think really needed to be able to generate a lead on, on the Maokai. We've seen this matchup a couple of times in a lot of really pivotal playoff series across the world right now, and 
we have seen that it goes one of two ways. Either the Wukong generates that early lead and is able to kind of snowball the game out of control, or he's not able to, and the Maokai just completely takes over and shuts down that champion from that point in the game onwards. And unfortunately for Aki, he had some real poor positioning in the early game. He was able to get caught out, you know, being a little bit over-aggressive down on the bot side, taking a ward. A really good job by Jackie Love and Mark to be able to collapse, and then for Tian to be able to get in to secure that first blood. And from that point on in the game, Maokai was off to the races, being able to control a lot of the tempo. But really, when you're looking at, like, who was able to take over this game, you have to start in the mid lane for Top Esports, because it's my player of the game. It's going to go to Rookie on the Akali. A lot of mid-game skirmishes coming out from both of these teams. Top Esports is just simply better, though. They were able to extend out a lot of the fights. Uh, OMG is really looking for a lot of burst combos with that Wukong Ari. Um, and they're able to get some. Cream actually has a relatively good game here. He hits a good amount of charms, and he's able to deal quite a bit of damage, even with the low damage build here that I know some people are going to criticize, but he's still able to deal a lot of damage in these team fights, and, you know, they were set up to kind of burst some people down and then get out, but Top Esports playing really slow, trying not to make as many mistakes. A rookie in particular really kind of testing his time, knowing when he needs to go in, knowing when he needs to play a little bit safer, and it absolutely pays off. He's able to clean up a lot of these fights and turn them in favor of Top Esports, and, you know, lesser Akali players I don't think nearly would have had the same kind of performance on this champion, but a really good mid-game. Um, they look... I would say a little sus during some of the mid-game fights, but again, like, as long as you're able to pull them out in the end, even if it takes, you know, 10 seconds in a full team fight to be able to do it, then it is worth it. They end up taking Baron, uh, and then acing OMG, and then basically just ending the game from there, but Rookie was super damaging in a lot of these team fights, and unfortunately, he had to die in that final fight right at the Nexus, which is unfortunate for his KDA, but still a really good game from him. Great game from Mark as well. I want to shout out both Mark and Tion, who I think are going to get a little bit underrated for this game. I think Wayward had some good engages. Jack Love was dealing good damage, but he was always on pressure on the back line, and so uh, really not a lot that he could do. He was basically fighting for his own life for a majority of the game, but Mark with really good peel, I would say trying to keep Jackie Love safe, but also those ultimates are really good. Um, Nami's one of those champions where if you can get the ultimates and the bubbles right, then you're probably going to be playing at a ridiculously high level. And then same for Tian, being able to take that early lead and just kind of translate it into a lot of teamfight success. I do think he could have been a little bit more proactive in the mid-game, but I think I'm just kind of looking for things to criticize at that point. Overall, I thought Top, e top Esports played about as well as they could have in this game, and there's really not a lot of negatives to point out. As for OMG on the other side, this was not a good game from them at all. Certainly not how you wanted to open up your playoff series. Uh, Aki's gonna get the dud of the game. Already talked about it a bit. He gave over pressure pretty much immediately, and those Wukong engages towards the back half were just not very good. You had Cream kind of diving on the back line, trying to blow up the Lucian, which worked out. You know, a lot of times he was able to land Charm, and he was able to deal a ton of damage and really get the Lucian out of fights or even kill him in certain scenarios. Um, but Aki just wasn't doing anything. He was ulting the front line. He was ulting the Maokai and the Kassante. And it's just like, man, this Wukong is completely useless. This is your all-pro player on OMG. This is the player that propelled them into that number six seed, which is more than what they've ever finished in the LPL, you know, in the last couple of years. Obviously not all time because historic organization OMG is if you don't only watch the LPL from like 2017 onwards. Um, but, oh, you know, recent history has not been kind to this org, and Aki really kind of pushed them over the top, I would say, over the course of this year, and unfortunately, he did not have a very good game one. Shanji was also particularly bad, but Scion's just not his style. He's not someone who wants to play these big meatballs that can just kind of run into people. I think he took it a little bit too literally. He thought he was a little bit or tank, a little bit too tanky in this game, was just kind of walking in and dying in a lot of these fights and not really accomplishing all that much. Scion does need to time his stuff at least a little bit okay, especially on a loose side, and that just unfortunately wasn't the case. Abel wasn't dealing damage. PP God really wasn't doing anything. Cream was. I thought Cream actually played a relatively okay game, but there's only so much you can do here. Overall, OMG definitely needs to clean up a lot of things. I suggest a much more early game-focused comp. I think that fits the play style of this team a lot. We've talked about it a bit in the preview. I think that OMG really thrives on being able to kind of set the tempo in the game and be able to move at their own pace, and they're really not going to be able to do that if they're playing this late-game comp and just kind of relying on top esports not to generate that lead. For top, though, I think it's a very good thing that you got OMG off of their comfort zone. If you can do that the entire series, it's not going to be particularly close. Seeing Shanji on Scion, seeing, you know, Abel on Zeri, like, these are the things you want to see rather than the Aphelios or the Rumble or, you know, Kareem on Akali or Silas or whatever, right? Like, these are the kinds of things that you're feeling a lot more comfortable seeing on the other side. And so, hopefully Top Esports is going to be able to keep it up, but OMG really needs to win this game, too, in order to keep this series even, really, at all. And so... Are they able to do it? Well, we'll find out right now as the winner of game number two was... OMG! They are able to take game number two and put themselves in a much better spot 
in this series. Again, you don't want to go down 2-0, especially to a team like Top Esports that has enough talent to just kind of run you off the rift if you're not confident enough to be able to 3-0 them, but it's just never a proposition you really want to put yourself in, and good for OMG. They are able to get him on comfort here. You get Shanji on something a little bit aggressive in the top lane, and man, did he make the most of it. We'll get into him, but of course, we're going to go over kind of the full game at first. A 25-minute win here for OMG, really dominant. I mean, it was never really in doubt. OMG controlled the early game, they controlled the mid game, and they destroyed the late game, really made that a quick win for them, and honestly, they they deserve all the praise that they're going to get for this game, but I'll also kind of go to bat in terms of some of the criticism that I think they're getting a lot uh, in terms of their champion pools later in the uh, kind of review here. But let's talk about the game first. Uh, first blood does go to the way of OMG. Mark is way too overextended and lame. You're just not going to be able to pressure a lot here as Aphelios Renata unless you have like the perfect gun combo. And you're not going to have that at level two when Mark is playing super far forward. He ends up getting caught out by PP God basically immediately and Abel's able to snatch first blood here on the Zaya, which just immediately ends any chance of the Aphelios being relatively useful in the mid game. Shanji then does an unreal play. I mean, this is something I, I would never see coming. There's a big 3v3 in the bot lane and then all of a sudden the top laner shows up and gets a triple kill. It's like, man, this sucks. If I'm wayward, I'm like, this sucks, man. How do I even play against this? But the Rumble shows up. He's super, super helpful in those fights. Because Rumble is really good early on in the game. I think a lot of people forget that. He is a kind of a big lane bully if you're not prepared to face him. Wayward learned that the hard way, but... Shanji able to get a ridiculous amount of gold. The pressure ends up going topside, and then Top Esports goes, okay, well, Rumble has gold. We're going to do everything we can to shut him down. We're going to try to get this Sedge Jax combo online. You know, the melee, you know, destruction combo, if, if you will, that we saw a lot at Worlds. And unfortunately, Shanji's just better. Wayward goes all in onto Shanji to try to pick up the kill. He's not able to. Aki joins to his rescue just in time to be able to pick up the kill onto Wayward. Tian throws that ultimate, but Aki blocks it, and Shanji's able to get out. And it's the great escape. Shanji then later uh, solo kills Wayward in a, well, not a solo, yeah, he solo kills him, I guess, but it's a 2v1 in favor of Top Esports that they don't end up winning onto the Rumble, and by this point, he's got like six kills. The game is completely over. Cream starts playing really well in the mid to late game, doing a ridiculous amount of damage on the Tristana. Aki's got good engages. PP God's got great follow-up. Shanji's doing ridiculous amounts of damage with this full combo, and he's everywhere on the map. It's just a really impressive performance. Shanji's obviously going to get my player of the game. It, it's a no-brainer, and this is where I do want to kind of talk about kind of the criticism that gets tossed towards OMG a lot uh, on Reddit and on Twitter specifically, which is the small champion pool. Well, I do agree that they definitely have a style that they like to play. You are only allowed to be called out for having a small champion pool if it actually is possible to ban your champion pool. If it's not possible to ban your team's champion pool, it's not a small champion pool. I don't know how much I have to reiterate that, but yes. Oh my god, they left the rumble up. Look at the bans. They banned Silas, Vi, and Yone, the highest win rate champions for OMG. Cream, Silas, and Cream, Yone, you have to ban. They are must bans alongside the Akali, which you didn't, you, you had to ban second rotation. It's incredibly solid, and he still was able to play a good Tristana. You know, great, awesome, small champ pool uh, uh, accusations definitely proven right there. So where is your room for the Rumble? Maybe you take off the Vi, but Aki had like a 90-something percent win rate on Vi this year. Like something ludicrous. He was super good on that champion. He's been good on Wukong even with the Vi gone. Uh, Abel gets talked about being this Aphelios one trick all the time. Samira obviously is a big pick for him, but he's really good on a lot of these other champions as well. Again, yes, do they have their primary picks? Absolutely. But if you can't ban every single primary pick that this team has... How can you call them a small champion pool? I hate this argument. And I think it is completely pointless. They have proven multiple times that they are simply more flexible than people give them credit for. And like, I, I don't understand what they would need to do to get this narrative to go away. I understand that narratives are, you know, good for the game. And, you know, it's good to have these like easily identifiable things. But OMG has so quickly cleared a lot of these narratives that have been placed upon them that it's honestly frustrating as a fan to see things that get spouted so inaccurately, so consistently about a team that deserves significantly more praise but Shanji was awesome that's all to say that Shanji's rumble is really good and it's a, a thing that is probably going to get banned the rest of the series but at the very least he got to play it in one game here but that's going to open up you know Cream to be able to play one of his you know higher picks or maybe able to get a Felios on blue side like something like that right like you're you're 
basically taking away Rumble at the expense of another good pick because you just can't ban them all. So good for OMG. Like I said, Kareem was really good this game. PB God was awesome. I don't think he's going to get the credit. He deserves for how much he was doing on the Rakan. Really good engages, really good disengages. Just generally great. And OMG looked solid. As for top esports, top side of the map just got obliterated. No one played well. Wayward got destroyed by Shanji. Tian was nothing this game. I mean, you go for that Jack Sedge combo on R5, which... I just think it's the wrong choice. Jax gets blasted by Rumble in lane, and you're just kind of hoping that you can survive that so you can get to the point where this jungle and top can play together as a duo, but you didn't. Oops. Uh, Tian's dud of the game for his horrible pathing in the mid game and just inability to tank anything towards the back half. He was missing ultimates. He really wasn't doing anything, and he was dying very, very frequently. Not a good game from him. And then Mark was also in the conversation for that. Just not a good game on the Renata. One really good ultimate did kind of save him from that in the Baron pit, but it didn't end up mattering because Shanji just pressed stop. Watch and so overall, uh, not a very good game for Top Esports. Really, not a lot of positives that I can give to them, but you know, it's still 1 1. You can win game two here and put yourself in a pretty commanding position, or game three, I should say, and put yourself in a pretty commanding position in this series. Still, uh, it's not the end of the world or anything like that to lose game two as long as you're able to bounce back. But for OMG, this is a lot of good momentum that they can have carrying into their next game. It's probably not going to be the same comp because, again, Probably getting that Rumble banned out, but at the very least, you've realized that you can beat this team, especially if you get picks that you are comfortable with. So who's going to end up taking Game 3 and really taking advantage and control of this series? Well, the winner of Game number 3 was... Top Esports! They are able to take Game number 3 here in this series and take control back from OMG. That momentum could not carry over into the third game here on Top Esports. Definitely asserts themselves. It's not going to be an easy road for OMG from this point onwards, but Top Esports deserved that with this performance. This was a really nice bounce back from them after a pretty disastrous game number two to see them do basically the same thing that OMG did in the second game. Now in the third game, I think fills me with a lot of confidence. This team has been playing relatively well in the playoffs so far, and I think that has definitely carried over into this series. But let's go ahead and talk about what happened. OMG was actually able to generate a nice early lead in this game. Aki with a really good gank into the bot lane to try and set up Abel and PP God. Unfortunately, PP God was able to get a lot of the kills in this game. He ended up leading his team in kills, and that's never a good sign for your team. But they were able to kind of transition that. You know, it wasn't clean, but they were able to get Dragon. You know, they win a fight around the Dragon Pit. It's like, man, OMG's looking really good. They're able to kind of play this early game comp with the Elise to really... Uh, high effectiveness, and Aki's doing a good job being able to pressure his advantages, but eventually, the Wukong is going to become a problem for the enemy team, especially for the Elise, who, if she gets caught out, she's just gonna die incredibly quickly. That's what Elise does, is she dies incredibly quickly, especially in the mid-game, and Tian was making some plays in the mid-game. I think Broadcast ended up giving him player of the game, and man, did he deserve that. Uh, I ended up giving it to somebody else, as you can see, but uh, Tian absolutely earned it. He had a really good mid game, was really able to take over a lot of the lanes, starting with mid lane. Poor Cream just had a real, a real rough time in this game, and it wasn't really his fault. I would actually argue that he played relatively well in this, mechanically speaking, but uh, just not a lot of opportunity for him to outplay some of these mechanics. I mean, Ari Charm into Everfrost into Wukong knockup. He's just dead. Like, there's nothing you can do there. And then, you know, later in the game, he's having to side lane against the Gragas, who he can never kill. And eventually, Tian just kind of full AFK, you know, tries to kill him in most of the game. It's just a really tough game for Kareem on this Tristana, who definitely wanted to get ahead. But Tian did a really good job shutting that down and being able to create a solid gold lead for TES. And then, you know, from those, you start to add up a little bit of gold, and you get to a point where you're relatively even. And then, boom, team fights. Oops, we win. Like, Look at the comp of OMG. I'm not particularly surprised that they're not able to win a lot of these fights against, like, a pretty good Gragas and a Wukong that has gold. Like, there's really just not a lot that you can do if the Zeri's going to be able to pump out damage from the backline. And that was unfortunately the case for OMG, or for Top Esports, I guess, in that case. Uh, because they were really, really strong in the late game. And their team fighting, that's their strength. You can talk about their inconsistencies in the early game, but this team knows what they are doing when they get to the team fighting section of the game. And uh, it's really proven. Uh, Jackie Love's a great team fighter. Rookie's a great team fighter. Tian's a great team fighter. But today, it was Wayward that really stepped up. He's going to get my player of the game for game number three on the Gragas. Those casks were perfect. I mean, this was a Gragas game. You could talk about Tian kind of taking over the mid game, but I think if Wayward plays a little bit, you know, less flashy this game, I don't think you're not, I don't think you're getting nearly the same kind of production and performance out of these team fights. I don't think they're as easy like 5-0, 4-0s as you were actually getting in this game. And I think that really does change the complexion. So Wayward is going to get my player of the game. I think you could very realistically give it to Tian. Rookie also had a really good game, really the top side of the map was incredibly strong for top esports, and they definitely wanted to play through that. But overall, I would just say TES looked good as a unit. 
And I think that's really what you're looking for. Like, this team really struggled for cohesion towards the back half of the split. I think Wayward coming back in has actually helped a lot with that. Ching Tian, definitely more of a lane-dominant player, someone who likes to generate his own leads. Wayward, definitely someone who's willing to play for the team a little bit more, more of a, a team fight oriented player, and I think that helps out players like Tian and Rookie and Jacula, who do like resources in the early game, but also are just really good team fighters. It gives this team a nice strong identity that basically all five players can buy into and play really at a high level. So, Top Esports showing some good things here, and then for OMG on the other side, showing some bad things, I would say. Uh, he had some good advantages in the early game. I thought Aki did a good job on the Elise to at least try to establish pressure and, and really put a lot of, you know, effort and pressure pressure into top esports like force them to make some plays in the mid game but unfortunately they did end up making plays and no one else was really stepping up to be able to deal that damage Abel was given a lot of resources in the early game but he really wasn't able to do anything with them PP God got all the kills and there's really not much you can do with it on the Rakan and for the love of God take Shanji off of Scion I'm so tired of this Shanji's gonna get my dud of the game because he just doesn't know how to play this champion like he does not play beefy meatball champions in the top lane all that well he wants something that can be able to at least put on some level of pressure in the early game so that he doesn't go into the late game thinking that he can just run at the enemy team and, and just survive because he can't um and so shanji just not very good i think you could realistically give this to cream in the mid lane as well but again i don't think it was necessarily his fault that he had as bad of a game as he did i think he was at least attempting to make plays but the enemy team was definitely on the lookout for him in this one but overall just not the game omg was looking for i think they were looking for a much more complete cohesive performance against a team like tes and now you've got to win two in a row to be able to keep your season alive and for top esports you've just got to win one and you're moving on to the next round to face lng it's definitely a big proposition for omg but you know we, we've seen crazier comebacks happen and so it'll be interesting to see if omg can do it but it's got to start here in game number four and we're gonna figure that out now because the winner of game number four was omg they are able to take game number four and they're able to push us to a silver scrapes game number five and i'm incredibly excited to say that because we really haven't gotten a lot of close series in the lpl up until this point this year so really excited to be getting one here between two teams that i really wanted to see go head to head and boy howdy have they gone head to head it was a very good game from omg just generally speaking they were able to jump out to a really solid early lead, and they never looked back. It wasn't particularly close. Shanji's just so good, man. Get him off of Scion. Keep him off of Scion. It is a really easy task, I think, for me to be able to recommend, obviously. Maybe they know something I don't. I don't see the scrims. They see the scrims, and so maybe he's crushing it on the Scion and scrims, but clearly it is not working. They have played two games of that, and they have lost both of them. He wasn't particularly good on that pick in the regular season either, if I remember correctly. Could be wrong about that, but that's just what's coming to memory either way you just want shanji on something that can be a little bit more proactive especially on a day like today where he is clearly feeling it he is clearly feeling it because this game was disgusting i mean shanji was actively just sitting there taking inhibitor tower by himself and all tes could do was sit there and watch because the Cassante genuinely couldn't be stopped he was able to generate such a large lead in the top lane that there was literally nothing anybody else in the entire game could do Small champion pool. Who? You banned the Rumble. Great. You have to ban the Vi against Aki. You have to ban the Silas against Cream. Oh, Cream now gets to play a Kali, arguably his second, maybe even best champion. Oh, Abel gets to play a Felios because you can no longer ban it now. Oh, Aki still gets to play Wukong. Shanji still gets to play Kasante. Like, yeah. Oh, small champion pool. Absolutely. Definitely a sticking point. Sorry if I'm a little bit aggro on this. I just don't understand it. Like, it is a conversation that appears so regularly and it's just so ostensibly false that uh, I, I don't know I don't know man uh but Shanji was awesome in this game getting the Cassante his most played champion over the course of the regular season was massive Wayward tries to go for the counter pick here with the Gwen we've seen this pretty consistently and it almost never works and it never worked in this series or in this game either not a good one from Wayward he was very close to getting my dead of the game but Shanji was really able to take care of everybody. Rookie ended up making his way to the top lane towards the middle part of this game and just giving Kasante free gold. And from that point onwards, it was just over for TES. But Shanji was awesome. Cream was really, really good. This was just a game where they were kind of asserting their mechanical dominance. You can talk about the macro diff, but that was more so top esports just having no idea how to deal with a fed Kasante and a fed Akali. 
And honestly, I don't really blame him. Like, Aki jumping on top of you with, like, Afelio sitting from the back line, and now you've got to deal with Cassante and Akali as well. Like, who is safe in this comp? Because I don't think it is anybody, right? Everybody's playing relatively well on the side of OMG, and, you know, this was just a game to kind of forget, I would say, overall, if you're a top esports fan. But yeah, Shanji's great. Cream was really, really good in this one. And OMG with a really, really solid win. As for top esports on the other side... This is not what you were looking for. I mean, this is basically the opposite of what you were looking for. Clearly, you wanted to close out the game here in game number four, but, you know, we've seen this before. We've seen teams trade wins back and forth and back and forth, but, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit worried. OMG has really found a comfort zone. They've kind of figured out what they don't need to do, which is put Shanji on something that can be, you know, kind of taken advantage of in the early game like the Scion. I think now that OMG is starting to play a little bit more towards that top side, play a little bit more aggressive, TES is going to have to find a new strategy to be able to take advantage of. Tian was really good in their wins, but he's been really bad in their losses. Again, very up and down, but that's just kind of been Tian the whole split. He goes for the Maokai here. Talked about this earlier on in the series. If that Wukong gets ahead, it's a big snowball. You know, it's really hard to kind of get back here, and that's what happened in this one. But if the Maokai is able to catch up, it can be strong. It's just kind of a, a flippy pick where if you don't end up, you're kind of relying on the enemy making mistakes is I guess what I should say. And unfortunately, Aki didn't make the same kind of mistakes that he did in game number one here. And so Tian wasn't able to get ahead. Like I already said, Wayward was pretty bad, but my dud of the game is actually going to go to Rookie in the mid lane. I think Wayward's getting a little bit too much flame for this game. I actually don't think top lane was entirely his fault. I already think this matchup is a little bit overblown in terms of what Gwen actually does to quote unquote stop the Cassante. But um, even outside of that, like Rookie going up and giving free gold to the Cassante certainly was not helping. I was I was pretty excited when I saw that Rookie was playing well in the first couple of games in this series because a good Rookie usually means the top esports is going to win the series, but again, the inconsistency that's come out from the mid laner has been astounding. Tristana is clearly not a pick that he is all that comfortable on. It's not really all that surprising. It's never really been meta during the metas where he has been like a top mid laner, but still, at the end of the day, you got to be able to perform. Jackie Love and Mark had some moments where they were able to survive, but this game was entirely about top side, and Rookie was a big reason why that Cassante was able to get out of control. Overall, you just got to be able to wrangle it in, to reel it in a little bit. Top Esports know how they want to play the game. They're really good at team fighting. They're not so good at macro. Like, they slowed the game down in game number one, and they were able to take it there. But I don't think that they're going to be able to do that against an OMG team that is on more picks that they feel comfortable with, especially if they're able to generate that early game lead. You need something that you can be proactive on in the early game. You need to make sure Tian is able to win in the jungle, and you need to get Wayward on something that he's not going to get blasted on in lane in the top lane. Those are the main goals that you have to look at going into game number five and for omg it's just stick to the plan you have figured out what you need to do and it's comfort it's comfort it's comfort shanji if you can get him on something aggressive do it aki if you can get him on something that can initiate do it cream get him on these melee assassins and then just put abel and pp god on something that can survive in the bot lane and ideally scale Aphelios thresh is perfect for that but who knows if you're going to be able to get it and so both teams kind of have an idea of what they want to do but topside has very much become the focal point for what's going to end up happening in this series and i have no idea Idea what that means for which way this is going to go but for a player who only played one game in the regular one series in the regular season wayward has a ton of pressure on him it's going to be interesting to see if he can shut down shanji but we're going to find out in our silver scrapes game number five it's either going to be omg or top esports moving on to face lng in round number three and the winner to be moving on was OMG, they are able to take game number five. They're able to reverse the trend here of swapping off games, and they are able to move on in the playoffs. They win their first playoff uh, series of the year, and really this organization absolutely needed this. For them to be able to take down a team like Top Esports is massive in the grand scheme of things. I know Top hasn't exactly been the powerhouses of the league in the recent years, or the recent weeks, I should say, but... This is an organization that in recent years has been incredibly successful, obviously. Players like Tian, Jackie Love, you know, Knight in previous years, but bringing in Rookie. Like, these are good players at this level. Some of the best players at this level and most historic players at this level. To be able to walk away with this, with a series win, is massive. And to be able to capitalize on a lot of the positives that your team has been able to bring is even bigger. They played awesome here in Game 4 or Game 5.
And I'm really hoping they're going to be able to carry over that momentum. But what ended up happening in game number five? Well, we can talk about it a bit. I'm not going to go into too heavy detail because, again, it's just reiterating a lot of the stuff that I've said in previous things here. Like, this game was actually very similar to game number four, in my opinion. Shanji and Cream, man. Shanji and Cream, the two big stars that we were kind of looking to break out in 2023. Well, they broke out in the playoffs here. They had a really good playoff series. Cream maybe had some games that were a little bit more up and down. And obviously, Shanji not looking great on the Scion, but you give them both picks that they can be proactive on that they can go out on the map and generate gold on and especially give them a jungler that you know is able to generate an advantage like Lee Sim and they're gonna be able to create for you player of the game's gonna be Shanji again he was player of the game in all three wins for this team you better believe he's player of the series for OMG this was not a difficult decision at all he was phenomenal in this series Kennen is one of those champions that I've talked about I was low on going into the year but clearly I was wrong about that because that champion can absolutely blast ask you if you are not prepared for him and you know Ari is kind of in that similar boat I know people complain about the builds that people are going on Ari right now but Ari's gonna hurt like you cannot underestimate Ari's damage no matter what like even if she's built Everfrost, Banshee's Veil, Merc Treads she's if she hits Charm she's still gonna chunk you for like three quarters of your health you know, if you're Zaya or Lissandra or someone fragile like that, like, you're not going to be able to take Ari's damage, even if she's not building damage. The champion just has such naturally high bases that, you know, she can really get away with a lot. That's why a lot of pros feel comfortable building her in this way. But Cream played awesome. He's just so good on Ari. We saw that earlier on in the series as well. He's able to be super proactive on that champion. And it's just fun to watch. I think the Lee Sin on R5 was a really good idea for OMG. It gives them a lot of that early pressure. Tian tries to take the Wukong here away from Aki and you know they answer by trying to to get that pressure early to put Wukong on the back foot a champion that really doesn't like to be on the back foot all that much and I think it absolutely worked in this one big credit to OMG their game plan went really well Abel and PP God did a great job being weak side also shout out to PP God he was really good in this game on the Thresh but even more so than that like Eliminating Tian from playoffs, that's got to feel good for PP God and the history that those two share as players in the LPL. So just good vibes all around for OMG, and you've got to be really happy that they were able to pick up the win here. Uh, as for Top Esports, your split ends here, and it's an unfortunate way to go out, but honestly, it's pretty apropos of how things have gone so far in spring. Uh, I don't think this team should be going far. I think they need to be forced into a position where they kind of have to fix their mistakes. I think, you know, them accidentally winning and almost getting to MSI might trick them into thinking that they're actually a team that can compete near the top of the LPL standings, but I just don't think that's the case in their current form. I think that obviously they have the talent to eventually get there, but to say that they're there right now, I think is an absolute mistake. Um, Dud of the game is going to go to Wayward. I think people are going to get really hard on Wayward for this series. I don't think it's entirely deserved. I think a lot of the games where he ended up getting blasted weren't entirely his fault. See, you know, the previous game in game number four, but I certainly don't think he played great in the losses. I think, you know, revisionist history will say that he was never good, right? And revisionist history, I've also already seen that his game three wasn't very good on the Gragas, which is just absurd, right? It's just people making things up in order to sound like they, in order to make Wayward look worse because they don't like him as a player. It just is what it is, right? But, um, you know, he, he's fine. He's going to be able to get better I think if he gets a little bit more time playing with this team the full year, obviously was on the bench for most of the year. I'm not sure if that impacted communication. He's obviously played with these players before, but not recently. And so that could definitely affect the way the, commu the, the communication styles ended up going, especially with a very vocal leader like rookie joining the team in his absence. And so maybe I would give it more time. But outside of that, I don't really know what to do. Tian had a pretty poor split. Rookie really fell off towards the back half. Obviously, you're sticking with those two, but you just got to hope that they get better. And if they don't, then you're kind of just out of luck. Jackie Love was pretty good in the series, but again, only so much you can do from the 80 carry position when your top side is losing as hard as his was. Overall, just an okay series from Top Esports. You were able to push them to five games, but really your two wins felt like OMG losses more than TES wins, I, I would say. I think that's the proper way to say it, is it didn't necessarily feel like you were taking control. It more so felt like OMG just didn't put their players on champions that they could actually exceed on, and so... Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say for Top Esports. I don't know what direction you end up going in, but for now, there are definitely some question marks to be answered before summer kicks off. As for OMG, we'll preview their series against LNG in just a bit, but you've just got to be happy for this org and for these players. They are young, they are hungry, and they are proving it right here and right now. They are no longer the future of the league. They are becoming the present of the league, especially players like Shanji and Cream who have really started to take over. This is one of my favorite teams to watch in the entire world, and I really hope they're able to keep up this pace. 
But now that we've covered the round two matchups, it's time to quickly preview what we're going to be getting in round number three here in the LPL playoffs. And we're going to kick that off with our upper bracket matchup between the number four seeded Weibo Gaming and the number five seeded Billy Billy Gaming. Really intriguing matchup between these two teams. I think they both function in relatively similar ways. Both, both are pretty feast or famine, I would say overall, as units when you look at them compared to a lot of the other LPL teams. Not that other LPL teams teams aren't feast or famine, but both of these two have had their ups and downs over the course of the split, you could definitely say, but Weibo's upside has been insane. BLG has really shown some good things in recent weeks, though, so how do I think this is going to go? Well, we got to start with the Shy versus Bin, because how do you not start with the Shy versus Bin? Arguably the two most talented top laners in the entire region going head-to-head. -head. It's going to entirely be up to who is in form, who is going to win today. If Bin is able to just kind of be better than the Shy, if the Shy has one of those series where he's just not very good, like, that sucks for Weibo, but... Bin's going to be the kind of player that can take advantage of that. On the flip side, the Shy can beat Bin. Like, it would not be out of the realm of possibility for the Shy to just be better than Bin in this series if he's playing at his mechanical peak. And so that's definitely going to be interesting. I think when you look at, like, Karsa versus June, it's two players that have gotten a lot of ire from the community. June, maybe not as much. Karsa's gotten a lot of ire, but I think Karsa's the better player. This is somewhere I would favor Weibo in, in this instance, if only just because I think Karsa's consistency gets underrated. He's going to have some bad games, but most of the games he is an absolute positive positive for the team, even if he's not the most flashy player in the entire universe, whereas Zhum is going to have some games where he actively is losing for your team. And I think generally speaking, the mid-jungle synergy between uh, the Weibo members is much better than what you have on BLG. And I would also give the mid lane advantage to Weibo. I think Xiaohu is going to be a little bit more proactive and a little bit more, I don't know, take over than Yigao, but we just saw Yigao. I mean, he had a really good series. He was player of the series against RNG. Maybe he'd be able to do it again here against Weibo. He's got fortune on his side. Playoff Yigao could be a completely different piece, but normally I'm going to give Xiaohu the edge here just for his ability to be able to create plays. And then Light versus Elk. I actually really like this matchup. I think these two players are actually very similar, not only in terms of talent level, but in terms of how they like to play the game. They like to take over more towards the back half but aren't going to be afraid to be able to pick up you know the Lucian Nami if they need to and so really like these two Elk has had a better year so far but Light's one of those players that I think could show up and just be an absolute monster basically on any given day I would say this is in favor of Elk but I think it is very very close and I think Light is certainly not a player that you can overlook but that's going to bring me to my key matchup of the series which is going to be the support matchup here between Crisp and On in the support positions pardon the lack of stats up on the screen there are very few relevant support stats that LPL actually tracks and so the best I've got for you is KDA, KP percentage and damage percentage which aren't the best support stats but LPL doesn't actually track any of the other ones and so it's the best I can do cut me some slack but Chris and on are going to be my uh my key matchup here I really do think that if one of these two has a really good series if Chris especially is able to kind of create a lot for light and make that bot lane really in favor of Weibo I would really see an easy world where Weibo is going to be able to take this rather easily especially with how well Chris has been playing over the course of the year, but if On is able to, you know, do those crazy plays, maybe pull out something like the Blitzcrank and be able to create a lot of early pressure, maybe even like the Thresh, like things that he has been very aggressive on over the course of the split, if he's able to do that, him and Elk can be the dominant force, like that's what happened in the regular season, and Billy Billy was able to win that series 2-1 to one in the regular season, and so very much up in the hands of the supports, in my opinion, I think that's probably going to be the direction that this series ends up going, but there are a lot of interesting pieces that kind of fall into place around this, I think if I had to go for a prediction. I'm going to predict Weibo, but I'm going to predict Weibo in five. I think Weibo 3-2, Weibo 3-1. I do think they should be able to win this series. I I'm very close to saying BLG 3-2 as the spread, but I'm going to say Weibo 3-2 is my lock-in, like, uh, uh, you know, pick my lock-in prediction, but, you know, this should be a really fun series between two teams that are kind of on similar paths, but I think I just trust Weibo and their ability to win high-pressure games just a tad bit more. And then when you look at the other series here, the uh, second series in round number three, this one is just as interesting. I actually think this is going to be a lot closer than people give it credit for. We have a matchup between the number three seeded LNG Esports and the number six seeded OMG. I'm really excited to talk about this one because I think it could be a really intriguing series, but... There is one lane that I think is going to be a little bit more of a passive lane, and I think we all know that's going to be the bot lane in this series. Both of these teams definitely run through their top side of the map. LP and Able definitely more uh, weak side bot laners, which is kind of rare to find, not only in the LPL, but just around the world right now. Bot lane is so strong that you very rarely 
find teams that are succeeding at this level, you know, doing this well with bot laners that are a little bit less in the priority list than maybe some of the other teams. But um, I do think that, you know, OMG and LNG both like to play either for their mid or for their top a little bit more than some of the other teams in the league. And so LP versus Abel, like, do I think that there is a huge difference between these two players? Not really. I think Abel should actually have the advantage here, especially considering champion pool. You basically have to pick or ban the Aphelios away, and LP has been bad on Aphelios. It's just not been a pick that he has succeeded on really at all this split. And I do think that PP God versus Hang is a really intriguing support matchup, but I think PP God's been a little bit better over the course of 2023. Obviously, Hang has the pedigree. He's been someone who's been very good at the LPL level in the past, but I think PP God's been slightly better. So I would give this as a slight edge to OMG in terms of the bot lane, but the top side is where I think that really starts to get a little bit murky. Shanji and Aki, I think, are a very intriguing matchup into Zika and Tarzan. I think Zika and Tarzan were definitely better in the regular season, but Zika versus Shanji in particular is a matchup that I'm really intrigued in because Zika is one of those players that I could see kind of caving under the pressure. He's never really been in a high pressure scenario in his LPL career, spending all of his time on Invictus Gaming after the collapse. He's never really had a lot of time to be able to play playoff series. And so to be thrust in there against a player like Shanji, who has shown that he's able to take over when he's on some of his more, I don't know, experienced picks, like that's a very scary matchup, I would say, for LNG. And then Tarzan versus Aki. This is the first time that I would say, you know, LNG definitely has an advantage here, but Aki was awesome in the regular season. I was hoping that he was going to show up against Top Esports and really show that he's like an all pro caliber jungler that deserves to be mentioned in the same conversation as like Tarzan, but it just didn't happen in that first playoff series, which makes me think that he's Probably not at quite at the level of Tarzan just yet, but these two players were kind of surprisingly similar in the regular season, and if that comes back out here, I wouldn't really be all that surprised, but I would definitely give the edge there to LNG, and then that, of course, is just going to bring us to our key matchup of the series, which is the mid laners here. It's going to be Scout versus Cream in this matchup. Um, really intriguing matchup. Two players that I think their teams depend on a lot. Scout, the likely MVP of the entire league. He was my prediction for MVP and then Cream. I mean, look at those numbers. Second in damage percentage, fourth in gold per minute, fifth in damage per minute. Like, these are big time numbers. Maybe not Scout numbers, but they're big time numbers. Both of these teams rely on their mid laners a lot. And I think this matchup is really going to tell a lot of the direction that the series ends up going. If Cream is able to sneak out some lane wins that are a little bit more surprising, I think that OMG might have more of a shot in this series than they're given credit for. But if Scout's just able to be that MVP caliber player, uh, LNG is just going to be a very difficult team to beat in general, especially if the enemy doesn't have this like dominating bot lane that can just kind of take over LP and Hang, who have kind of been the weak, uh, the weak side, I would say, of LNG over the course of the year so far. That leads me into predictions, and, and I'm going to predict LNG to take the series 3-2. to two. I think OMG is going to keep it close, especially with how they played against Top Esports, but it's LNG 3-2, LNG 3-1. I think at more so than the previous series, LNG should have this. If Weibo and BLG end up being, you know, really close and either team takes it, I'm not going to be surprised. LNG should be the better team between them and OMG, but OMG definitely has some things going for them, especially if players like Abel and Cream are able to step up and really make an impact in this series. But overall, really, really interesting matchups coming out of Round 3. All right, that is going to do it for my LPL round two overview and analysis of both series. I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know down in the comments section below that you did enjoy. It really would mean a lot to me. Of course, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed as well. Not only does it help me know that you guys are enjoying the videos, but it helps get this out to a lot more people, which of course is just great for the channel overall. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We go over every single playoff series on this channel across all four major regions as well as the NAC. So if you like this video, you're probably going to like a lot more of what we're doing on here. But overall, I really do appreciate you guys' support. You know, these videos are definitely getting a little bit more difficult to crank out. 33 days in a row is definitely a tough task for someone who's not really making a lot of money on these vids. But uh, overall, I, I really do appreciate all the feedback I've gotten. You guys have been awesome. But with all that being said, I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you continue to have a great day. And I will see you all later.